What's going on, everybody? Andrew Thompson here of the Andrew Thompson Interviews YouTube channel. I am sitting next to or standing next to a third generation talent, Curry Morton. Curry, what's going on, man? How you feeling? Man, Andrew, thank you for having me on the show today. What's up, lovely wrestling fans and all those listening to this? I am excited to be here and shot at North Carolina at the Gathering 3, baby. What a fun time. Like, has your father been, like, extremely supportive to you in terms of just making sure that you, you do feel that pressure of carrying on the board name, but at the same time doing it in a way that motivates you and wants you to be better overall as a wrestler. You, know, you have a great point there. My, my father's been nothing but supportive to me right now. You know, uh, In this career, I, I have only limited time to, to make an improvement and make steps in this business, and that's what I'm trying to do time and time again. And he's been nothing but supportive. He's uh, helped me get my, my name out there along with uh, Uncle Robert, and uh, I couldn't thank him enough. And uh, especially this weekend, having all the connections and networking and seeing these legends and them coming up to me and saying, hey, man, I've been watching you. And I'm like, what? I watched you. So what a really fun time. I'm very fortunate to be in this position that I am right now, and uh, I'm loving every moment. I was about to say, you just came off of Ric Flair's last match, that whole event. It was you and your father. You got, I mean, you, y'all got to uh, take on Brock Anderson and Brian Pillman Jr. with Arn Anderson in the corner, of course. Tell me about that whole experience, man, how cool that was for you and the entire event that that was. And, of course, the main event, which was Ric Flair getting back in the ring at uh, 73 years old, man. Yeah, what are the lineage, man? The Four Horsemen and the Rock and Roll Express, you know, that, that any old school wrestling fan or current modern wrestling fan that is that's really into the game should know that the Four Horsemen and, and the Rock and Roll Express made history and we did it once more on Ric Flair's last match. You know, I saw Ric Flair during the week and he took his time and he came and talked to me and he said, you know, Kerry, uh, I, I was a big, big fan working with your dad back in the day. And he told me, he said, Kerry, if there was a draft in professional wrestling right now, if there was a, a draft pick, he said, you know, you would probably be my number one. And hearing the Nature Boy say something like that is absolutely the most humbling thing in the world. The greatest professional wrestler of all time. I'm going to say it on here. The Nature Boy, Ric Flair, to call me his number one draft pick is very, very humbling. Uh, he watches me at NWA, National Wrestling Alliance. He watches me in Major League Wrestling. And he's watched me on the independent circuit uh, here and time and time again. Really cool. And uh, just to see Nature Boy step in that ring one more time, baby. Woo! So uh, what a really, really fun time to see that, man. It was, you know... Uh, not only did Ric Flair uh, strut the strut and, and walk the walk, he did that, all of that, and some more, baby. So I'm just, it was super, super great to see him out there walking down that aisle with his robe on. And uh, I couldn't I couldn't think of a better moment to top off the weekend than watching the Nature Boy do it one more time. And you talk about legacy matches, man. I know back in February, you and your father, y'all actually got uh, debuted at MLW, and y'all went against the Von Erichs. Talk about that whole experience, man. Of course, your MLW debut uh, and how you think that match turned out for, uh, for for all four of you guys. Oh, man, the Major League Wrestling was such a fun time to be at, especially at the Grady Cole Center in Charlotte, North Carolina, the same place that we're here now. Uh, Rock and Roll and I toured up. We had a fun, fun time. We tag teamed together. We went against the Von Erichs, and those guys are the real deal. Unfortunately, uh, the favor was not in our hands that night, but never say never. We're coming back, and we're coming back to MLW to look at some tag team gold, and I promise you, I assure you one thing, Kerry Morton, We'll have some MOW gold in the near future. And, of course, you, you're working with the NWA as well. I see you're a regular on NWA USA. You frequently appear on there. Talk to me about your whole experience in the NWA, man. Of course, being in the same organization that your father made a big name for himself. In. That's right. I, I'm very fortunate to say this wild and cloud uh, that I am. <laughs> Is this the hardest right there? I, I'm very proud to say. That's Nick Hardest for all those that didn't know picking with me right now. The locker room leader of the National Wrestling Alliance. Uh, I'm very proud to say that I'm, I'm proud to stay up the National Wrestling Alliance. I'm there. And uh, coming here on August 27th. I get the chance to step in the ring with Homicide for the World Junior Heavyweight Championship. And uh, what a time to be alive. I love being there. Uh, Billy Corgan has a, such a, a great direction for the, uh, the business and the National Wrestling Alliance. And I'm glad that I'm in this vision. And I hope to see the wrestling fans that come out to watch me, support me. I truly am gratitude and I appreciate all, all the love. Yes, and of course, you talk about that NWA World Junior Heavyweight Championship. You were in that inaugural uh, match back at the Crockett. Cup, Rock, I believe. Rock. Yeah. So now that you get your finally get your one on one shot, I know it got to be an exciting feeling, man, to know that there's a possibility that you might be the next NWA World Junior Heavyweight Champion. You know, I, I keep on counting on the days leading to August 27th, night one of uh, NWA 74, and truthfully, it means everything to me. You know, everything that's involved around my career so far leads to this moment. Uh, some wrestlers say when you get in that ring, you always give it everything you got. See, Kerry Morton, when he steps in that ring, he's already going to give it everything he's got. And you're going to expect nothing less. Because, I listen, as I was raised in this business, you give the fans what they want. 
and you give them hard work in professional wrestling, and that's what I'm going to do. And so Homicide, I'll tell you loud and proud right here that I'm coming for that championship, and I'm going to do everything in my matter to have that championship on my waist at the end of that night. And, of course, lastly here, Craig, man, I did want to ask you, like, man, you have, like, you're very still, I would say, like, early on in your career, but at the same time, it seems like you're gaining, like, a lot of experience as, like, you know, just basically as the year goes on, man. Talk to me about some of the learning curves that you've been able to experience and also, like, some of the things that you, like, subconsciously absorbed that you maybe not even realize that you've learned, but, like, things that you just picked up and naturally, like, done with yourself in the ring. No, that's a great question you asked that. I think the most important thing I can say that I've learned so far in the professional wrestling world is patience. Uh, it's it's so tough to do, especially being 21 years old. I, I want to go out there. You want to go out there. We want to excel the world, and we want to show us everything we got. But unfortunately, that's not the case. I got to learn my patience. I know my time will come, but hopefully my time is coming sooner than later because I am ready to show everything that I, I'm ready for this moment. I'm ready to prove the world, and that's what professional wrestling is all about. So uh, hoping in the near future, as Robert's over here too, and, and they're giving me advice time and time again, uh, patience always comes back to the foreplay of uh what they're trying to tell me. Okay, and one last thing I do want to ask you. I had just came to my mind. How about them NWA USA Tag Team Championships? Man? You already know. See, uh, as of right now, night two, I do not have, I'm not booked. I'm not booked as of night two, but I am booked as of night one. And I just happen to know that my father is just coming with me. And so I don't know about you guys out there, but the Mortons and USA Tag Team Gold just sounds beautiful. So uh, I think... I think, rightfully, if I if I have that championship around my waist and I can enter in that tournament, then uh, I'm going to do so everything in my might because we want some championship gold, and that's what we're going after, and we're going to get it. There you go. There you go. Hey, Curry, any last plugs you got, man? Your social media, please plug everything. I'm going to make sure to plug it in the description of this video, man. By all means, please find me on social media at Instagram at Real Kerry Morton, Twitter at Real Kerry Morton, Facebook at Kerry Morton. That's K E R R Y M O R T O N, baby. It's cooler than a polar bear's toenails on an icy day. That's what Kerry Morton's all about. Man, I really, really appreciate you having me on the show, genuinely. And uh, thank you for all that. Stay tuned and listen to me talk along with this lovely host right here. We appreciate you. There you go. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Andrew Thompson and Andrew Thompson Interviews YouTube channel signing off with Kerry Morton. And we are out. Peace.